everyone. Welcome to another edition of Founder Wisdom Podcast. Today we have with us Richard Bridges. He is the owner slash CEO of Bridges Business Solutions. Richard, welcome to the pod. Can you introduce yourself and uh, tell us a bit more about Bridges Business Solutions? Sure, Charles. Thanks for having me on today, man. I appreciate it. And it's a little dark right now if you're looking on camera because I'm in the back of a car and we're ready to come out. Yeah, being kidnapped as we speak. Um, but yeah, my name is Richard Bridges. I'm the CEO owner of Bridges Business Solutions. What we do is uh, we help small business owners, predominantly folks in the residential or real estate spaces. Um, we help coach them and put together plans of action, whether it be marketing or uh, business planning or just best utilization for their budgets um, to get the best ROI and performance out of their businesses. So I've uh, been in real estate for almost 18 years. Uh, ran a really successful um, real estate team. We were internationally recognized. We would do 40, 50 million in sales a year. Um, and that kind of took me through, you know, all of the different roles within real estate, managing broker, broker owner, and then ultimately here now owning a kind of a productivity company for real estate professionals and small business owners. So when did you shift from the uh, real estate agency business model to the, the coaching business model? So actually, uh, it was a two-step process. Uh, I got out of sales in 2015. Uh, okay. I started in the business in 2004. Uh, 2015 was actually my best year, but my quality of life was pretty poor. I have four kids. Um, they're a little bit older now, but they were young uh, and I was working 100 hour weeks. So it wasn't it wasn't really a sustainable thing. Um, and I learned a lot of lessons, you know, with that type of volume, uh, working kind of with a small team. And then uh, I realized what I really liked was kind of the wins that my team members were having yeah. when they would sell or have a great month. And uh, sharing in that win was a lot more enjoyable for me than even just going and selling, you know, at a high volume myself, right? Because I had done that for uh, managing at a, a pretty large national real estate firm. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of their managing brokers, actually one manager of the year uh, for them in my first year. And then within two years, I had moved to a pretty large local regional startup. Um, and now they're one of the largest real estate brokerages in Northern Virginia, right outside of DC. Um, and then, you know, while I was there, I really realized that I liked the management, but what I liked more was the agent development aspect of it. things. So I was able to take kind of my experience uh, as, a, as a top salesperson, as a leader uh, within the industry, and I was able to kind of create a support system and network, a community, if you will, uh, of people who really wanted to just take their businesses to the next level, collaborate on it. And. Um, that's basically what we do. We partner with agents and help them take their businesses to the next level. Okay, so multiple questions in one. So let's test out your brain here. But um, cool. fir first thing first, did you have like, um, not a aha moment, but like a kind of burnout moment of like, hey, I'm rich, but I uh, don't, I I'm not happy in that situation. My kids need me. The second question is, can you tell us about the equilibrium of uh, money and, and passion? Yeah, absolutely. Those are two outstanding questions. I'm glad you asked them, actually. Um, the first answer, uh, the question being, did I have that aha moment? And I had a few of them. Like, there was definitely that gut feeling that I felt like I could be doing better as a parent, yeah. um, as a better as a spouse. Hmm. And, uh, and for me, like, one of the things we coach to you now is we have this concept called your six, goal, uh, six circle goals. Okay. And it's where we want, you know, anybody can be if they pour every ounce of everything they have into being a great salesperson or business owner. Mm -hmm. But if you're a great business owner or a great salesperson or you do well at work, but you're not doing well at anything else, it mm -hmm. doesn't really impress me, right? Like mm -hmm. when we start thinking about the definition of success, what really yeah. is success? Yeah. To me, somebody who's crushing it in all areas of their life, that's Same success here. to me. Yeah. So yeah. for me, you know, what, what I realized is I was working, I was doing well, we had just passed a million dollars in gross commission income for the year wow. and best year ever. And people were like, wait, you're going to leave the industry on a high. And I said, yeah, man, if you, if you knew what it was like, and, and I think the biggest moment I could tell you, if I share a quick anecdote, um, mm -hmm. my kids were little, I remember I came home and it was like one of those things where I was like a ship passing in the night, didn't see my wife ever. I'd be up mm -hmm. and gone before they woke up. I would be back home while everybody was in bed, never really mm. saw my kids. Mm. And I remember coming in the kitchen and we had a vacation planned, right? It was mm -hmm. the first vacation in a really long time. Mm. And I remember coming in the kitchen and they were, they were real excited, right? They're telling me about, hey, we're going to go on this trip. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to go. And mm. they started talking about going to like the um, souvenir store, right? Mm. All the stuff they're going to buy. It's like one of their favorite things, right? Pick up mm. souvenirs when you go to the beach. Mm -hmm. And they started talking about it. And I was listening and I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's super exciting. And they were like, and what do you want us to bring you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? 
And they're like, well, what do you want us to bring you? You're not going to come. You don't come to things. You're not around. And I was like, that was that moment. Like it was, you know, that maybe that watershed moment where you're just like, dude, you can be killing it, but you're not, you're not even close to killing it. There's still so much more left for you to do. So that was the first one. Right. And, and that year, um, that was the, the last year in production. So that was the summer. And I was in management, uh, working for a brokerage, kind of a nine to five, 40 hour a week job by November yeah. of that yeah. year. So real quick, it was real hard, you know, had to break some hearts and had to step away. And, um, that was really difficult, but my wife and I, you know, we made the decision together. She supported me and, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't regret it one bit. Kids um, so are, was are amazing for that. You know, their innocence and they're, they're so intuitive, you know, and they, I think they can open your eyes like in a moment like that and things that we don't realize with our adult IQ based brain, you know, um, very powerful uh, turning point right there. Uh, and I'm curious with your current clients, do you teach them some of these practices? How do they become uh, from uh, time poor and money rich from uh, time rich and, and money rich too? Yeah, well, I think the big thing that we really try to focus on, around is understanding what your time is worth okay. and re- realizing that there's a lot of different ways. You know, one of the things I learned really early on in my career is you don't get rich selling your time. Um, you know, you get rich selling a service that yeah. you can scale without needing to reinvest invest right more time. There. So, um, and so, so the reality cool. is, is, you know, you're never going to get that. I talked about the time. You're, ne- you're never going to get rich selling your time, right? right. You know, you're, you're going to get rich selling a service and scaling that and fi- figuring it out. Um, so one of the things we really try to focus on with, with, with our members and our agents and the folks that come into our community is getting to understand like you have to work within the boundaries of uh, those goals, right? you know the the reality i mean the one million um per year uh but you were unhealthy and you were getting fat <laughs> yeah getting fat i was 30 pounds heavier than i am now you know mm. i didn't really have strong relationships with friends or family and so all those things were kind of getting pushed aside for the sake of my business and i realized the people that i was do like the people i was working hard to give a lifestyle that I wanted them to have a better lifestyle than I had growing up were the ones paying the price, yeah. right? Like they weren't actually getting the benefit from it. And yeah. so that realization, and then honestly going, Hey, I need to take this lesson. I need to share that with other people doing big things. And now I work with people making as much or more than I was mm-hmm. when I was selling real estate. And I see the same problems, right? Yeah. I see those same things. And so for me, it's like, Hey, let me prevent them from having to learn this lesson the hard way. Yeah. Um, and so that's been really why I think I've become passionate about it because yeah. it's like, you know, seeing somebody be able to be well-rounded in a lot of different areas is uh, you don't see it often, but when you do, it's really special. And I like to help people try to try to figure out how to be special. So do you teach them how to start their own agencies? Because if I, I work with a bunch of uh, real estate brokers, that was my first business. I stopped working with them for pretty much the same reason that we're talking right now on um, the disbalance of it all and yeah. um, the toxicity also, which is uh, prevalent in the industry um, sure. so that we can talk about. But um, do you teach them, how do you teach them precisely to free their time up? Because you could start your agencies, can manage people. Generally speaking, if you start an agency, like you're going to have to be a bit more patient until you reach, you know, the, the same money that you've been making as a broker. But like, how do yeah. you teach them to it, free up their time? Yeah, freeing up the time is, is it, what they have to be willing to do is, is, uh, is pursue leverage. They have to get mm-hmm. comfortable with taking stuff that they may want to do themselves or they think that they're particularly good at and they mm-hmm. need to let somebody else do it for them. You know, I see these small brokers, they struggle and I do. They're, they're, they're clients of mine too. I work with small brokerages who want to recruit and grow and get mm-hmm. agent count, which to be honest is really at least where we are in most of the markets in and around the DC metro market. It's really hard to have a profitable um, real estate company if you don't have agent count, right? Yeah. Because margins are super tight, right? They, what they pay on commission splits now, you know, you can find a 100% commission split at, you know, 75% of the broker shops out there. So how do you make money? And so a lot of these, these brokers have to get creative. They have to work all these extra hours. They're trying to figure out how do I recruit? How do I retain? How do I get my margins up? And that's really, really challenging to do if they're not going to lean into the support and get people in. And that's one of the things we do. I kind of come into a brokerage and say, hey, listen, I'll be your training, your retention, your productivity uh, solution, right? You're going to contract with me. 
you can pay me or you can give me access to your agents and I'll make sure that they get the support that they need so you can focus on running a business, not babysitting agents. When I was in management, the thing that killed my time more than anything were the got a minutes, right? Okay. Knock on the door. Hey, I got a problem. Can I run it by you? And it was always, it was always, do you got a minute? It was never an actual minute. It was yeah. 20 minutes. It was 30 minutes. End yeah. of your day, you, went, you solved seven, eight other people's problems. You didn't solve any of your own problems. Correct. So that's tough. Yeah. And you got to be able to let go of, of those things that really aren't the highest and best use of your time. If you want to work 40, 50 hours a week, you got to make sure that all 40 and 50 hours are being used on the most productive, uh, highest ROI activities possible. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel that most um, small business owners or solopreneurs have the problem of like, hey, I achieved godly performances, and now I need to outsource. But that person's never gonna reach my expectations, and then they get fed up and they get impatient. And after one, you know, they they are pretty much traumatized by their experience, and then they they stop looking elsewhere. What is the solution to that? Well, one of the big things that I see is people try to hire people like them. That's a mistake. You shouldn't be hiring someone who's like you, right? Yeah. And I made that mistake. I actually had a coach and I hired five people and we did one of these assessments. And I remember taking the assessment to my coach and saying, hey, what do you think of this? And they go, you hired a bunch of yous. You don't need mm. any more yous. Mm. You need people who can do all the stuff you're not good at. Yeah. Where are they? And then that kind of light bulb moment, all right, I got to go out and find the people who aren't like me, the people who, you know, maybe I'm not going to, like personality wise, we're not going to want to, you know, we're not going to mesh socially as much. You know, I, at first I was hiring people that I was going to be buddies with instead of hiring people <laughs> who were going to make me better as yeah. a professional. And so it's, you know, that's, that's the reality of it. And I do tell people like, no one is going to do it the exact way you necessarily envision it, but yeah. if they can do it between 85 and 90% as proficient as you can, mm -hmm. and now all you have to do is go back and take up 10% to make sure that the quality is there to what you want it to be. You just saved yourself 85 to 90% of your time on that particular task. So mm -hmm. you have to also get past perfectionism. You know, there's a great book Jensen, Jensen Chero wrote. Uh, it's a quote she put in the book. There's other people that have said it as well, but I'm going to attribute it to her. She said, done is better than perfect. Put yeah. something out there, get it done, and then you can refine and learn and grow and scale as you go. But Very you got to have that support. For your coaching business, I'm checking out your packages now. Um, I'm curious how do you make money on the, the first one, $60 a month uh, and 60 minutes of live essential training. So is that like the equivalent of try my product out of some kind of free trial, but almost free, and uh, you want to upsell them to the next package? How do you make money on that one? No, so the $60 a month is, is, is more of a passive product. What we do is we provide kind of a great... So when I coach agents, I say at the bare minimum, the most important funnel, the most important lead generation source you're going to have in your business are the existing network and relationships you have. We call it your sphere of influence, right? Circle yeah. of influence, whatever you want to call it. That's kind of what we refer to it as, as, as your SOI. Yeah. We provide those marketing resources templated every month that's easy to plug and play. It's solid content. It's similar to what I used when I sold. And we give that to them every single month. It includes blogs. It includes uh, video scripts. It includes downloadable resources, newsletters, items of value, e-reports, things that are going to make you look like a subject matter expert and also put you in a top of mind situation with the people that already know, like, and trust you, right? So that you get the referral and repeat business. And we provide that to you. And it's basically turnkey. And since we can scale that, it's 60 bucks a month. The one yeah. other thing that we provide with that, that 60 minute a month is a group training, right? Yeah. So we can scale that indefinitely. It's mm -hmm. 12, 12 a year. So we yeah. really try to hone in on what we think with the market and what's going on are the most key essential trainings for people in this space, you know, these okay. real estate entrepreneurs. Okay, interesting. How many clients do you have right now? We have 150 in one-to-one -one and maybe about, I think between 30 and 40 on the other two packages, Essential Pro and Essentials, which is essentially just, like I said, the group training and the downloadable resources. Okay, is the one-to-one -one with you or do you have other coaches? So we have seven coaches now. Um, okay. I am pretty limited in terms of the capacity and who I can work with. Yeah. Usually I'm working with top producers, folks okay. coming in that aren't really looking for how do I get started in the business? Yeah. How do I ramp up from, you know, five to 10 million or 10 to 20 million? I'm typically working with folks that are doing at least 25 million or more as a mm -hmm. solo agent, mm -hmm. or they're a team doing 50 million or more. Um, and that's just based on demand uh, okay. time restrictions. But what's great is I have seven other coaches 
that all have been through our process, right? Their okay. businesses have grown, you know, they're there, they can share, they can connect, they can offer their insights and they're actively in the business mm -hmm. working. So I have folks that have been clients of mine, they've grown their business, they're doing really big things, they're bringing in half a million dollars a year easy mm -hmm. and also have time to coach. And they're there meeting with new, a new agent or somebody getting their license or someone who's there and they've plateaued or maybe it's someone who's dual career and they're trying to leave their one job and do real estate full time. So we have those folks there that can help and support and meet. And the one-to-one -one is so, so important, right? Those, those connections are, um, uh, are great opportunities to check people's mindset, to check yeah. their habits, their behaviors, their schedule, to give them the accountability and to give them a little bit more structured support in yeah. their plan and moving forward. Hmm, got it. Interesting. And the one v one is it monthly or is it the one-time fee? Uh, it's, it's twice a month, every month. So you get two meetings a month. In addition to you get everything else that we include downloadable resources, weekly meetings. Cause we do group group meetings every single week, sometimes multiple, we do in-person mm -hmm. events quarterly. Uh, and then, uh, we have a big business retreat at the end of the year. And what we also do is, uh, one of the big things for us is networking events. Okay. So we actually help to plan and facilitate, uh, like a client event or a, a networking event where you can have people come. We, we, we find the venue, we basically price it out in bulk and we give a turnkey solution for our members to be able to say, hey, I'm going to have this event. I'm going to invite 50 to 100 of my past clients or my closest friends and family, mm -hmm. have them come through here. I'm going to be the person who made this happen and ultimately be able to bring in some business as a result of those uh, top of mind interactions. Very cool. Is your resubscription rate high on the 1v1 front and also on the monthly packages? What does it look like? Yeah. So when we have somebody come on the one-to-one -one packages, they're typically in, um, if they, so th I'll give you the one caveat. If they make it past the six month mark, yeah. we're talking probably 90% retention for oh, okay. years, two, three, four. I mean, I have my first coaching client ever. Uh, he signed up for me with me five years ago. He was okay. the first guy he came in, he was doing about 5 million a year in volume. Nice. Um, and by his fourth year, he had started a team and he's doing over 50 million in, wow. in business each year. He's got 14 agents on a team with him. And yeah, uh, yeah he, he, he's absolutely crushing it. So those people, we grow with them, right? It isn't yeah. a like, hey, you start on this date, you end on this date. You know, what's going to happen is the challenges you had five years ago, they're going to be very different, but we're growing, we're adapting. And part of it is, you know, we're all, we're all showing up as entrepreneurs in our own right. And we're all trying to be the best versions of ourselves we can be. And we grow together. So that's part of the process as well. I really enjoy that collaboration element. Yeah, I have the pre pretty much the same stats as you. Do you, is it like six months minimum commitment or they can, so, can they commit monthly or uh, try monthly? You know, I'm a big believer in going like, hey, if it's not working, I don't want you to feel like you're locked into anything. Yeah. That may change in the future just because what I'm realizing and, and why other folks do have some sort of minimum commitment mm -hmm. is because if folks don't give it a fair shake, you won't ever really know if it works or not. Correct. I'd love to say somebody comes in, we have two conversations in month one and their entire life changes. Their <laughs> life might feel like it's starting to change, but it won't have completely changed by the end of 30 days. It's a yeah. process. Yeah. So I get why people lock them in. I would say if we have, that's why I said, if we have somebody who makes it through that first six months and they have enough time to actually sample and see the results, they're going to continue with the program. Folks yeah. who come in and go, I'm signing up and they don't commit to showing up, doing yeah. the meeting, taking advantage of the resources, which can happen. You're not going to get any results, right? If you don't put yeah. in the, if you don't put in the effort. So yeah. that, that's where, that's definitely where you see that, um, uh, the ratio change significantly is when they get through that first six months. Yeah, hundred percent. What I also see in coaching, I'm a power user of coaching myself. I think I have yeah. like four or six coaches or something like oh, that. Oh, same. Yep, and, same. And it's, you know, like if you're a beast and you're using like various tools to be successful in life, you'll, you'll be, you'll be adding a coach and yeah, he, he'll not be the main reason why you're successful, but just because you, you're taking so many steps in your ABCDFG in yep. uh, testing so, so many things out there. So that, that's also something that, that I see. And, you know, the, the coaching business is, is very much fascinating to me for that reason. I'm curious to see, um, when do you think you'll make as much money with that business as you were making it as a broker back in the days? You know, I think really the thing that's going to be the turning point for us is when we get to the point where we can scale and really emphasize 
uh, standalone products online, right? That can be like self paint, self paced products okay. that people can take, download, go at their own speed. And yeah. it's going to include all of the same type of stuff that we're providing in our one to one. So yeah. having that course selection all done is going to be a big turning point because of scalability. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is getting into the point where we're doing large workshops, seminars, conferences. That's always, I've always been a big junkie of those, go to all the conferences, all the seminars. And I know there's a lot of opportunity in those to get your, both to showcase what you offer on a really uh, kind of an intimate, on an intimate level, sell the products you have, but also be able to earn money from the events themselves, right? Having sponsors, all that stuff. So I think when we're at a point where we're large enough and we have enough of a, uh, uh, of a, you know, of a market that we can start doing those things all over the country, that'll be a big turning point for us. And then obviously that goes into books and, you know, it goes into other seminars and online webinar types training, all that stuff. So, you know, we're, uh, I, I would say within the next 12 months, we'll probably be at the turning point for us. We've only, we're only been in business about 18 months yeah. as our, as this business. And for mm -hmm. us, it's been a lot of infrastructure building, you know, getting our back end systems in place, making sure all the coaches are on the same page in terms of content and support and one to one and training and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, man, that's that, that's what I think. I think probably within the next 24 months, I should be able to be at or above where I was selling. Very exciting. Um, I want to take the last few minutes here to discuss about uh, the mastermind. I also have my mastermind and, you know, it's a fascinating experience. You always get so many insights, you get accountability, you get knowledge, technical and soft knowledge. So I, I very much like uh, the masterminds. And I think my interest started when I started reading uh, Think and Grow Rich like 10 to yep. 12 years ago or something like that. Um, I have my own masterminds. They're successful. I have a free edition and a paid editions. There's always uh, sure. cons as well and free editions. I mean, a bunch of people drop out or don't show up. You know, these are some of the problems that we're experiencing. Tell us a bit more yeah. about um, your mastermind business, uh, the, the pros and the cons. So we actually started to make our masterminds based on production. So it was invite only and way up and us taking the time to facilitate conversations that are at a very high level. Um, we've actually onboarded the vast majority of our very successful members from masterminds that we opened up for that month to outside folks, right? They could pay a one-time fee, come to the event. And then all of a sudden they're like, whoa, this is the community that I could be a part of. I'm in, sign me up. How do I get, how do I get invested? But when we were doing it where everybody could be included every single month, it was like, if everybody's special, no one's special. So you got to kind of make it so that there is these elements where it's like, you're with the right people, having the right conversations for where you are and where you're trying to go. That was mm -hmm. an important element. And so for us, you know, it's also, um, you know, we, we, we use it as a marketing, like a, as a hook, um, yeah. but it's predominantly just for active members. And so when, when they're out there and, you know, and for us, we, we spend very little in marketing dollars, you yeah. know, the 150 members we have is all word of mouth, right? Yeah. So our agents talking to other agents, other members, or, you know, other potential members and saying, this is what my experience is. And then they show up at a free event. And then the next thing they know, they want to, they want to join. So for us really now, level is going to be marketing and i think taking full advantage of those masterminds will be really important as well producers love that stuff yeah scarcity is one of the best yeah i'm there um scarcity is one of the yep. best uh, marketing tool there is out there it's just sometimes the the ethics and the applicability to it that i mean in your case it's like a real scarcity and in masterminds you know it's like hey i have five spots or four and they need to fill them up when i was uh when I had my marketing agency for realtors back in the days, um, I would give them territories. And I think it's the, the month in which I've generated the, the most money in my life because they would all throw themselves to uh, book their territories. You have this city, you have right. this city, for example. How, right. how could I apply that, for example, to, um, to my current uh, cold emailing business while staying ethical, for example? Because I love the fact that I can make a bunch of money off it but i also don't like the aspect that uh it can limit uh the amount of clients i can get somewhere and also the applicability of it you know like say that i can only accept um five software as a service in that niche in that city uh, software as a service are not really limited by um geography so what do you think about uh, scarcities and giving out specific seats in in that context 
you know, I, I think that if we're not necessarily charging different for different tiers, get access to this space, this community, this, uh, you know, this, this mind trust, um, mm -hmm. I think then you're not, you're not doing it in any unethical way because everybody needs support. It's just different where they are. So I think for maybe what, where I could make a parallel between what you're doing with yours and, and kind of what we're doing with ours is figuring out what are the similar, what are the, what are the groups of problems that are most similar for certain groups of people where they are on their, on their growth journey, on their business journey, and see if you can't go, all right, great. Now I want to facilitate these master groups that are going to specifically answer the, the questions to these problems, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to answer these problems and we're going to want to make sure we're inviting people who are right there in that space, dealing with it themselves. So when they, sh they like to share, Right. That's the one thing about it is if I go to a mastermind and I'm facilitating mm -hmm. and that's not the mastermind we want to be having. For yeah. me, it's the people showing up and I ask a question and people go, I tried this or I, you know, this was an experience I had on my face and I tried the thing you just said. And let's talk about it. Right. Let's come in why that happened. A lot from hearing from the people who are doing what you're doing in your space. So that would be the end. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, you did. And I think. I mean, the scarcity applied to my cold email um, service slash company. Maybe not. I'm I'm for, I'm looking for a way to to implement it properly there. But for the mastermind, certainly, I also run a mastermind, like I told you. And I think uh, if I uh, start a specific mastermind, in your case, it would be for real estate agents, and you could limit the spot because <laughs> it's also that uh, agents are very territorial beings. You know, uh, it's their profession, and it's also their personality. Very. And I think that it makes 100% sense for, for them. Um, and, and maybe for some other industries, for example, if I'm a CEO of um, wood, uh, wood producing company or, or wood, uh, sure. I'm, if I make desk in that city, I don't want my, the other desk maker to show up there. But in, in some masterminds, they love to speak like um, wood desk makers from another country, for example, because they're not sure. necessarily directly competing and they get they can get like direct insights. What do you think about making masterminds reuniting um, all, all the same people on the same roof, but like from from different parts of the world? Um, so like best things about it, they gave me the best return that paid for actually purchase services from people that were right there alongside me there to learn and share and grow and there's an element to the vulnerability aspect to it right mm -hmm. like one of the things i'm very open and honest about the struggles and things that i've had to deal with in my business and i think that's a very attractive element where people go like hey he did a lot in his business but he's also been out there he's got issues in life he's got things that he's working through and i really try to cultivate an environment in my masterminds too that yes they're your competitors but if we're truly looking at the space as this industry, it has a ton of abundance, right? There's, there's an abundance of opportunities. You just have to be willing to go out and put your own mark on it and figure out a way to do it the best way you can do it. Focus less on what everyone else is doing. You're going to get results. So there is an element of it where they come and there's some competition there. And that's always great, right? You want to do well. You want to measure up against the competition. But you don't want to hold yourself like your – you don't want your identity, you know, your success identity – to be parallel to what someone else is doing. Like if you're measuring mm -hmm. against that, you don't know, right? You don't know, you don't have any of the background information that they have. Like there might be a leg up or there might've been an opportunity or an in that they had, or they might've, you know, you don't know. So mm -hmm. I think that you spend too much time, you know, you look, my wife says to me sometimes, Edison sometimes, she says, you drive long enough with your eyes in someone else's lane, you're eventually going to hit something. Okay. And so that's, <laughs> That's, that's me, right? You know, that's, I got to make sure, hey, I'm going to pay attention to what's right in front of me, right? Yeah. And what foot I can put right in front of another. And so really, you know, I have had people that I have actually worked with that I've coached and they came in, they said, hey, if I, if I work with you on something, you can't tell anyone else. And I'm like, yeah. one, there's no secrets and you're not the only person who have had this idea, right? Yeah. Original ideas I don't even think exist. Someone's had that idea, right? Yeah. The thing about it is if you're going to do it your own way Nobody else is going to have the same viewpoint, going to mm -hmm. have the same execution, the same resources and the same circumstances when they deploy mm -hmm. this thing. So you just focus on doing it the best that you can. And if you spend that time doing that versus worrying about if somebody's going to steal your idea, 
you're going to get way better results. 100%. I so agree with that. And you, yeah, usually it's a red flag when um, someone comes with that or an NDA, you know, for an idea that like a million other people had. Execution is right. pretty much everything in our world. So yeah, um, Richard, thank you for your time today. Uh, it's already the, the end of that interview. I thank, I, I yeah. thank you. And I, I think you dropped a bunch of value bombs there. I think people are going to appreciate. Where can people find out more about you? Uh, they can obviously go to our website. It's uh, buildwithbridges.com. Uh, if folks have questions, they can reach out to me directly on email. We're on all the social sites as uh, Bridges Business Solutions. But if you want to email me, that's usually the best way to get in touch. I respond to everybody who reaches out. Richard at buildwithbridges.com. That's R-I-C-H-A-R-D at buildwithbridges.com. And uh, I love networking. I love meeting people. I love talking. Uh, even if it's not even in necessarily the real estate, how that stuff can come about. Oh, man. So um, anybody that's looking to have those type of conversations would love to. Thank you so much for your time, Rick. Have a good day. I appreciate you, Charles. Have a good one. Bye-bye.